Welcome to the presentation for Group 10's final project for Information 247. Classical music was suggested by one of our team members as a possible domain, and as it happened, two of the members of our group are in fact professional classical musicians. Katie is a bassoonist, and I, Susan, am an opera singer. We further narrowed our domain to just reflect the needs of music librarians and professional opera companies. Before we get to that, though, let's talk a little about opera. What is opera? A dramatic musical work in which singing forms an essential part, chiefly consisting of recitatives, arias, and choruses with orchestral accompaniment. Although opera technically started in Italy, Spain and France developed their own operatic entertainment forms right around the same time as Perry's opera Daphne, widely considered to be the first opera performed in Italy. The six eras of opera cross centuries and sometimes even smaller self-contained eras, such as the Italian Verismo period, which made up the tail end of the Romantic era. Because most operas before the 21st century are in the public domain, many different publishers produce scores, and these scores exist in several formats. Full scores contain the music for the soloists, chorus, and orchestra in large folios used by the conductors in the orchestra pit. Vocal scores have just the soloist and choral music with a piano line, also called a reduction, underneath. Orchestra parts have just the lines needed for individual instruments. All of these items are expensive to purchase, vary in quality from publisher to publisher, and are constantly being edited and reissued to keep pace with current musicological research. We decided to organize our workflow by job desired and skill set. The domain analysis examined the four areas determined to be of the most importance to a music librarian. The librarian at Seattle Opera, Emily Cabanis, provided invaluable insight and resources to the project. The sources identified in the domain analysis and recommended by Ms. Cabanis were used to extract appropriate terms for the formation of the thesaurus. Aitchison's fundamental facets were used to perform our facet analysis. The relationship analysis was conducted using the required hierarchical relationships, including scope notes for foreign language terms that have not yet entered English as loan words, voice types, and stylistic period timelines. After editing for duplicate terms and non-domain specific terms, our list was narrowed to 139. 100 of 119 of those terms became our preferred terms and 20 became non-preferred non terms. This is an example of our final alphabetical index. See the scope note for the now non-existent voice type of castrati. Also note that canzones, while it originated not in English, is now a loan word and thus did not need to have a scope note. This is an example of our faceted index with its semi-ordinal notation. All of the ARIA instances listed are now loan words in English. We learned lessons from our project, such as that with a thorus, thesaurus containing extensive foreign language terms and loan words, it proved challenging to determine how many scope notes to utilize. It would have been very easy to continue going with scope notes until every term that didn't originate in English or was still in its foreign language form had a scope note. Also, analyzing the terms in controlling forms such as the diacritics, hyphens, apostrophes, Capitalization and pluralization was much more difficult than originally anticipated. For example, nouns in German are often capitalized, but because we were following the form of the standards set out to us, we decided to not capitalize German terms. However, we really enjoyed producing our thesaurus for op opera industry professionals, and we hope you enjoyed listening to our presentation. Have a wonderful vacation.